New shooter coverage of IBC 2023 is sponsored by Atlas Lens Co., Atomos, Sennheiser, and B&H. That's Matt here for newshooter.com at IBC 2023. I'm back with Stuart from Black Magic Design. Now, yesterday, along with numerous other releases, I think the surprise one for me personally, I think, was the Black Magic Camera mm. app. So this is a new iOS-based uh, smartphone app. Mm. Tell me about it. So, so with this, this is this is really kind of a left curve, kind of out of out the park approach from us. And I think that a lot of people, as you say, were quite surprised by our move um, into this camera app. I think. What you've got to look at is that the quality of the camera technology within these phones is getting better and better year on year. This, this week, obviously, Apple announced a new um, uh, iPhone 15, and the pro version of that is an exceptional camera that um, has the ability to record ProRes and also has the ability to do log on it. Um, we've been working for some time on the development of this Blackmagic app, um, the camera app, to ensure that we give somebody with the capability of getting their hands on a product like that all of the features that they need in a professional environment, professional workspace. And this app really delivers upon that. Um, this enables you to have things like um, zebras, um, focus peaking. It allows you to do all the professional functions and features that you would see on a typical Blackmagic OS. Um, so if you're familiar with the Blackmagic cameras, the Pocket Cinema camera, the new Cinema Camera 6K, the Ursas, we have a very familiar um, uh, sort of uh, way of working with our software, we've brought that now to the phone. And, um, and I think that the capability that this now brings means that anybody can go online, download that app for free, and ultimately get the same software features that they would experience within one of our own cameras. Now, what you then got to look at is, okay, that's great having a nice camera, and it's wonderful to be able to have all those features and be able to do the things that you can do with the Blackmagic camera. But where do I go from here? What do I do with that footage? And this is really where the cloud link comes back in now. So 12 months ago, we announced Blackmagic Cloud, and we talked about how you could now share your project's collaborative workflows within the DaVinci Resolve work workflow. And at the time, we had a, an enormous wave of people who were sort of working with Blackmagic Cloud, um, editor to colorist, colorist to audio guy, VFX guy to editor. But for us, it was always about how now we can integrate that technology with the camera guys and what the new iPhones do, and not just the new ones actually, if we go back, this goes back about 20 different iPhones. I mean, this is going back beyond iPhone 13 and iPhone 12. Um, and what we now have is an app that is now communicating and talking using Blackmagic Cloud directly into DaVinci Resolve. So what you can now do is you can actually um, set up a Blackmagic Cloud storage account where you purchase um, essentially storage. Um, and what happens is when you actually record on your phone, you can sync that directly into a library sat on a DaVinci Resolve system. So I could be here in Amsterdam, I could be recording footage on my phone, uh, as soon as I essentially upload that file, a proxy will automatically be being generated and, and um, refreshing within my DaVinci Resolve system based back in London. And my editor can start working on that straight away. And then we also have communication tools within the phone and also within DaVinci Resolve. So uh, my editor can be saying to me, look, you need to go and get another image um, of a close-up of that particular thing. That will pop up on my phone. I can now go in gather that bit of content to put um, to send back to my editor. Um, also as well, I, I have the ability in here to work with multiple devices, so there could be four or five or six of us, all at this show today, all recording content on our phones and essentially syncing that back into DaVinci Resolve into a single project library. So what we're really doing now is we're making this collaborative workflow something that really encompasses not just the post-production side of things, but also the acquisition side within, within cameras. And it's, and it's also been made in a way where, you know, you can use more professional orientated features in there, but it's also very simplistic UI, so if you're a, a novice, you can get a hang of this and use it pretty easily? Yeah, I mean, I mean obviously what, what we can see with the, with the app, and we'll, we'll obviously see this a little bit more closer up, is that we have all the functionality in terms of the white balance settings, the zoom settings, autofocus settings, um, focus peaking, um, all our audio monitoring on there. We have a media tab to collect all of our media. Um, we're able to create essentially a series of, of libraries. We're also able to go into our own photographs and upload our own photos in maybe previously shot videos directly into DaVinci Resolve. 
Um, we, uh, we also have in there um, uh, things like Zoom features built in within this. Um, so, you know, what, what we're able to do is, is, is have all of that functionality um, that a professional camera would have within the hands of a device that sits in our pocket. Um, now, if you're a vlogger or if you're just somebody out there who is shooting video for yourself or for your family, um, the fact you can download this app now and have professional features um, means that, you know, you all almost can take the quality of what you do to that next level. Um, for those people who are maybe within news or within live events or are actually out there in a professional capacity and you know maybe you have to shoot in a covert manner or you don't have the um, accessibility to larger equipment or a team of people, um, the fact that you're able to create high quality content and upload that directly back to your post-production facility or to your editor means that you know all of a sudden now you're creating a high, um, a high quality, high end workflow with essentially a phone and an iPad. I mean, an iPad could run DaVinci Resolve. So, you know, you're now working with two iOS devices with Blackmagic software running in a professional capacity. Now, I take it it's, it's fairly tightly integrated with, with, uh, with iOS and Apple devices. Is there any plans for an Android version? So, so obviously there's a high volume of Android, Android devices out there, but I think the thing that you find with Android is that you know, whereas there is a high usage number of people, there is also a high variety of different types of Android cameras and Android phones. By working closely on the Apple devices, the things that we've been able to really get it, get our heads into is really where their quality exists within, the, within the, the cameras and their evolutionary path of where they're going in terms of the evolution from 14 to 15. Um, some of the new features that they're placing with on those on those new new cameras um, within the iPhone 15 mean that it's a real step up in terms of quality. Um, for us to go and develop something for Android, it's not a, a case of us saying, look, we're never going to do it. But certainly for us in terms of the development time, the investment of time right now, um, it seemed more suitable for us to go down the Apple route um, at this stage. Um, and certainly we've been really happy with the results and the way in which that's all come together. And obviously next week, if you lucky enough to get your hands on a new iPhone 15 Pro and download this app, you're going to have one hell of a piece of equipment in your hand for, you know, $1,000. And I imagine, um, you know, being black magic, you guys are constantly updating software, DaVinci all the time. I'm sure this is going to be an app that gets a lot of updates as well. Yeah, well, I mean, typically anybody who's experienced working with black magic over the years, we don't charge for our updates. They're free updates. Um, it's something that we're constantly working on in terms of upgrading and refreshing and cycling through what's new. We're constantly upgrading things like our color science. Um, how, to, how can we get more out of the images and the sensors that we have? Uh, Resolve's just gone to um, 18.6 from 18.5 at the show, so there's a whole load of bug fixes in there. There's a few new small feature um, uh, updates been put in there too, as well as that collaboration with obviously the I, iCloud, sorry, the cloud, uh, Blackmagic Cloud and, and cloud storage. Um, also, this upload feature, which you're seeing in the app, is also being put in our um, Ursa Broadcast G2 as well. So the broadcast camera will also have the Cloud Sync feature in it as well. So you can tether directly from your phone to your broadcast camera and automatically uplink your video files into DaVinci Resolve. Or obviously that can be done via Ethernet through the, um, through the back of the camera. So all of these updates, constantly working on that, constantly trying to make these, these products as, as best as we can. I mean, we've, we've had a period now over the course of the last 12 months where it's been an intense few months trying to get to this stage. Um, we're really happy with where we are. We understand that we can't do everything, but my gosh, we've, we've really kind of uh, run, the, uh, run the oil low over the last few, uh, last few months, working long hours and, and really pushing it hard. And the development team has gone a, gone, a, gone a huge way into delivering something that we're really proud of.